record it on computer. Who knows? We can put it online. So um, the the previous part of the lecture is recorded here. Uh, I just started recording it. Okay. So a is eight. F of eight is two. All right. Now what is f prime x? F prime x is going to be so cube root of x is same as x to the power one over three, right? So f prime x is going to be one by three x to the power one by three minus one, which is two by three. So what is cube root of, uh, sorry, f prime at eight is going to be one by three times eight to the power minus two by three, which is going to be one by three, eight to the power one by three, the whole power minus two. Yeah, whenever you have a fractional power, you can take any one first, right? So this is going to be one by three. What is one, what is cube root of eight is two. So two to the power minus two. And that is going to be one by three times two to the power two, which is going to be one over 12. So this is your F prime eight. <clears throat> now let's plug it uh, back into this equation here. So we get L of X is going to be F of eight, which is two plus F prime eight, which is going to be one by 12 times X minus eight. So this is your linearization function. It is good as an approximation, as long as you're close to eight. All right. So now you want to find out what you want to find out cube root of nine, which is same as F of nine, which is roughly close to uh, going to be L of nine, which is two plus one by two, 12 times nine minus eight, which is going to be two plus one by 12, which is going to be two times 12 is 24, 24 plus one is 25, 25 by 12. So this is your cube root of using linear approximation. <coughs> so far good. Now let's do the same problem using Newton's method. So for Newton's method, you will do the following. So same problem, Newton's method. Isn't, isn't linear approximation the same as um, like differentials? Cause it's like F prime of A could be like F prime of X and then X minus A is like DX, right? That's right, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's very close to the concept of differential itself, right? So you so, can, yeah, you can use well, either one of them, right? Well, will ask like, um, to solve by differentials, isn't it this, like the same as linear approximation? It is like plus. Oh. <laughs> it is. It is. It is. It is. It is. But not. Not exactly the same. All right. Um, uh, yeah. So generally, different. See, the, the motives are different, right? Differentials are used to see if you change small. If you do small change in x, how does your y changes? Right. That is a different question than asking what is the value of function at a certain point. In the, in the IQ asked, um, like approximate this value using differential. Yeah, so yeah. Isn't, it, isn't it like the same as linear approximation? Cause yeah, it is, it is, it is exactly the same. Yeah. yeah. But written in a different format. Right. Yeah. But it bifurcates the, the, you know, like same thing can be used for two things, like same ob two different things can be used for the same thing, but they have a bigger usage. Right. So what do I mean by that? Differential have, a bigger usage, they are useful to compute. If you change, if you do small change in X, how does your Y changes? Because that will not be very clear right away from the linear approximation. Okay. okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. So, so yeah. So let's move to the next part, Newton's method. So what for Newton's method, recall Newton's method is used for finding the zeros of the function. So I have F of X. I want to make a function out of this. Uh, such that cube root of nine is a zero of that function. So can anyone suggest me a function? What should the function look like? So I want a function whose root, so I want this to be cube root of nine. Yeah. So I'll cube on both sides. So we get what? X cube minus nine equals to nine or x cubed minus nine equals to zero, right? So we have encoded, you are looking for cube root of nine and that thing you have encoded as what? Zero of this function. 
Yeah. Why are you doing this? Because Newton's method can only find out zeros, right? So, <coughs> so my f of x is is going to be what x cubed minus nine. Okay. So then recall what does the Newton system looks like? X n plus one is X n minus f of x n divided by f prime of x n. Wait, I'm sorry, but um, why do you have to do that for the Newton method to figure out the fx function while on the linear approximation, you don't do that? Okay, so Newton's method, so the way Newton's method works is you are given a function and you're finding zero of that function. Where does that function becomes zero? Yeah. Whereas linear approximation, in linear approximation, you basically are using the tangent line, slope of the tangent line, or sorry, the equation of tangent line to find an approximation. So these are two different tools, right? Right. Yeah. So Newton's method is basically finding zero. So you should present your problem. Our problem is to find cube root of nine, finding cube root of nine as a problem of finding zero. And that is why we have to write it like that. Um, how about differentiation? Do we have to do it like the linear approximation or the Newton method? So differential is a different story altogether. Okay. So differential mm -hmm. is dy equals to f prime x dx, right? So you approximate, you say, well, delta y equals to f prime x delta x or dx, if you want to call it. And you use a different story there. So let's come back to that later once we finish our Newton's method. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> so we have this to be xn. What is f of xn? f of xn is going to be xn cubed minus nine. What is derivative? f prime of xn is derivative of this. So derivative of this function is three x squared. So we get three xn squared. All right. So this is your Newton system. If you want to simplify it, you can simplify it or leave it at that. So here the choice is not given to you, right? So what will you choose as x zero? Anything you like really, but uh, notice the following. You have an idea where cube root of nine will lie, right? You know cube root of eight. So cube root of eight is two. So your answer should be somewhere near two, right? So you should choose x zero as something which is near two. Yeah, you can either choose 2.1 or you can choose two or the, the, the what do you say? The x zero will be provided to you. But if you are to make a choice, then you can choose anything which is near near cube root of nine. You have an intuition what cube root of nine is going to be, right? So use x zero to be two, and then you get x one as x zero minus x zero cube minus nine divided by three x zero square. This is going to be two minus two cube minus nine divided by three times. <coughs> sorry. Uh, two square, which is going to be two uh, minus so eight one so one plus one by twelve, which is going to be again uh, twenty five by twelve. So this is your x one, and then you basically do x two and so on and so forth, right? So exam, you'll be told to do how many iterations, or you'll be asked to stop when uh, when it's accurate up to two decimal places. All right. <coughs> All right. So, so you can finish the next part of it, right? Okay. Next question. Sorry for the linear approximation. Hello. Yeah, I'm listening. Yeah, go oh, ahead. Um, how did you get um from f prime eight? You went from one third times eight to the power of negative two equals three. How did you get to one over three times. What is f of x? So how did you get from one third times eight to the power of one third from negative from eight to the Hold power? On. Of yeah, so that's what I'm asking you. So f of x is cube root of x, right? Yes. So that is same as x to the power one over three. Do you agree? Yes, but from uh, from the power of negative two over three, and then you 
you went back to one over three? Uh, you mean this part here? Yeah, that part. Yeah, well, you have to compute eight to the power minus two by three. You can compute it whatever way you want, right? So I compute it in the following way. I have X to the power A divided by B. So you can compute X to the power one by B, the whole power A. Oh, okay, okay. Or, okay. or you could have computed X to the power A, the whole power one by B. It's up to you, right? I mean, like, since I'm not using a calculator at the moment, I'm trying to do everything on the fly, right? So, and you don't need calculator to do this problem, really, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Thanks. For the linear approximation, will you be giving us A, the A in on the test? No, you will have to find A, right? That's one okay. of the skills of finding, right? I mean, okay, thank you. So for cube root, for example, if you are finding cube root of nine, you have to choose something uh, which is close to, to nine and has a good cube root, like a perfect number, right? So suppose the same problem can be asked, what is square root of 17? If you ask square root of 17, then you'll choose A to be 16 because square root of 16 is well known as four. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. All right. Other questions, comments? Yeah, I got one more. Okay. I'm going to share my screen. It's it's finding a derivative and then I don't know like I don't it's kind of confusing. Uh Sure, I can't see your screen, but uh Yeah, I can't share it. I'll just <coughs> you. So it's yeah. like Can you uh, tell me? I'll I'll try to write it down. Okay, let's see. Yeah, so it's like so you know how there are like this cube root, right? There's like 3 in there, but instead there's like 7. Okay. And then it's like ln 3x inside. <laughs> okay. Um, now, okay. So, uh, so you have y equals to what? So there's like, a, there's like a, so you know how there's a like cube root, right? And then in there, it's like a three. Oh, you mean cube root of x like that? Yeah, but instead of three, there's seven. Oh, so seventh root of x. Yeah. And then there's, it's not x, it's uh, ln 3x. Okay, I see. So your question is how to differentiate f of x equals to cube root of, <coughs> sorry, of, sorry, this is seventh, as you said. So seventh, seventh root of ln of 3x. Is that what your question is? Yeah, that is right. Okay, so we have to employ chain rule here, right? So we have ln of 3x, the whole power 1 by 7. Yep. Okay, yeah. Now, guys, can you um, make your cell phone? Oh, yeah. Um. So, f prime x is going to be... So, first of all, you concentrate on the outermost function, right? So, what is the outermost function? 1 over 7, right? So, derivative of something to the power 1 over 7 is what? 1 over 7 times 1 over 7 minus 1, which is what? 6 over 7. So, ln of 3x multiplied by d by dx of ln of 3x. Do you agree with that? Yeah. Okay. okay. And then everything is good. So we have this part, the derivative is already taken. So we don't need to do anything about it. Minus 6 by 7. Now, what is derivative of ln of 3x? Well, I mean, either you break it as ln 3 plus ln x. In that case, the derivative is going to be, so note the following, d by dx of ln of 3x is d by dx of ln3 plus ln x, right? Because ln of ab is ln a plus ln b, right? Property of logs. Yeah. <coughs> so derivative of L, ln3 is zero, right? Because it's a constant. And derivative of ln x is one over x. So you will get one over x here. Otherwise, if you don't like that, you can try to do the same thing using chain rule. So derivative of ln of 3x is going to be one by 3x multiplied by derivative of 3x, which is going to be 3. So 1 by 3x times 3, these guys cancel off. You still get 1 over x. Okay. Yeah. So both ways, the answers are the same. <coughs> All right. Questions? And then we can just leave it like that, right? Like I think so. That, that's good enough. Yeah. OK. All right. Thank you. Thanks. Can I ask you a question about like increase and decrease? 
Um, that is a uh, part of the next. Uh, you can ask me questions though. Yeah, but that is part, not part of the exam. But I will answer that question. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Just like find the intervals of increase and decrease of seven cos five x. Seven cos five x. This is your f of x. And it's like in between negative three pi over five um, from to three pi over five. I see. I remember that somebody asked this question on, on, on Canvas, and this is a question from OQ. <laughs> right? Yeah. Okay. So first of all, <coughs> recall, what does it mean by a function is increasing? So a function is increasing. How can you capture that information? You can capture that by looking at the derivative, right? We discussed yeah. this in the class. If derivative is positive, the function is increasing. If derivative is negative, the function is decreasing. Yeah. So let's take f prime x first. What do we get? What is derivative of this guy? So seven times negative sine. Perfect. So negative sine five x multiplied by five. Five. Okay. So now before you want to see it's greater than zero or less than zero, you should first check when this becomes zero. So when is this guy equal to zero? So you work this out, so you get, so let me write down this problem carefully, find interval of, let's just have this here, find interval of, interval of, increase so you want to find out so to find out say suppose somebody tells you find the interval at which something is increasing so if somebody is asking you what is the so give me an interval so essentially you're giving the endpoints of the interval right so suppose somebody tells me give me an interval i'll say okay two three so interval two to three means i'm giving the endpoints of the interval yeah so uh, recall, we had this discussion in the class, but say here, the function is increasing. And after that, the function has, is going decreasing, but it has to, the derivative has to become what? Zero, right? Or the other scenario is, it is basically increasing, and then it goes decreasing, the derivative has to become, does not exist, right? The derivative should not exist at corner. So <clears throat> these were exactly the numbers so these are exactly the point we should find out first. So sine derivative always exists. So we are not interested in this case. So we get sine of five X equals to zero. Now, right? I mean, if a bunch of things are positive numbers, multiply some numbers multiplied by sine five X is zero, that means sine five X is zero. That means X. So what are the values of X? When is, guys, can you, uh, hello? Can you please uh, mute your? Uh, um, can you mute your uh, microphone, please? Okay. So we get what x is then what? So five x is multiple of pi, right? So therefore, x equals to n pi by five. Do you agree with that? See, what multiples, where n is a natural number, or n is an integer, really. Right, for all, uh, sine is zero when it's a multiple of n pi. Does that make sense? Can I just set five x equals pi? Because like, yeah. it's, um, okay. Then, uh, okay, yeah. so sine x, okay, let's go that way. So sine x equals to zero, right? Because sine zero is also zero. Yeah. Or pi, right or 2 pi or 3 pi do you agree or yeah. on the other side it will be minus pi minus 2 pi and minus 3 pi right so why did i why am i stopping at this so this means x is either 0 <coughs> pi by 5 2 pi by 5, 3 pi by 5, minus pi by 5, minus 2 pi by 5, minus 3 pi by 5. Do you agree? Yeah, I mean, yeah, like, yeah. 
Yeah. Okay. So now what you have to do is the following. You just have to check the sign. So mark these points. So zero is here. <coughs> pi by five is here. Two pi by five is here. Three pi by five is here. You are not going to go beyond three pi by five because of your domain restriction. So let's just be okay. And then you have minus three pi by five. Then you have uh, minus two pi by five. And then you have minus pi by five. So these are all the intervals you'll have to investigate. One interval, two interval, three interval, four, five, and six. All right. <clears throat> now what you have to do is generally what happens with sine, uh, cosine is it basically cuts and goes across. So just find the first one here. So take a value function of your, take a point of your choice here. You can use a calculator to find out whether the sign is positive or negative. Okay. And then based on that, you can find out all the values. Okay. okay. So for example, I can clearly say cos, uh, so cos, so sine zero is, um, so cos zero is, so you're here, right? So cos zero is, <coughs> You want to look at this interval here. In this interval, you know that the sine is what? Sine is uh, positive here, right? Do you agree? Where were you? Zero to five, pi by five. Yeah. Right? But you have a minus sign in front of it here. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be negative here. Then it's going to change the, keep changing the sign, plus, minus, plus, minus, plus. Right? So now, wherever it's positive, so this is called sine diagram of, of f prime x. So wherever it's positive, it's increasing. Wherever it's negative, it's decreasing. Okay. All right. So, uh, and you have to also be careful about the following that uh, you write it as open intervals, not closed intervals. Okay. So minus two. Why does it have to be open, um, open intervals? Because here, you see here, so the derivative has to be greater than zero, right? For yeah. increasing. At these endpoints, the derivative is zero, right? So it's not greater than zero, neither it's less than zero. So, yeah, so you generally discuss about increasing and decreasing on open intervals. Okay. Okay. All right. Other questions, comments? Wait, on, the in on the exam, if I just, what if I just like graph the function originally? Can I just, can't I just graph cos 5x and I could just, tell just by looking so at first it. First of all, this is not in the exam, right? This problem is from the OQ. No, in like the final exam, right? Um, no, you have to basically uh, explain your work, right? Because I mean, like the idea is, I mean, I, I can do this problem. Now we have to be, so the problems will be chosen in a way that they really show your work, right? Because you can go online and graph. Like, I mean, I can put it on Desmos and I can get the answer in a minute like that, right? Yeah. So just to be fair, you have to show all your work. That is where the most of the the thing is going to lie, right? I could just take the cos x graph and, and then um, compress it by five. And then after I could just tell right away instead of just instead of doing all this, right? Yeah, okay. So if you explain yourself correctly, but still we are using derivative to find it. So you have to use a derivative. See, the idea is the following. These are toy problems, right? Like these are simpler problems and we are learning how to use our tools on seven cos five x. But in real life application, you may have a slightly more complicated problem, in which case you won't be able to draw the graph and argue right away. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, it's good to know these tools and that's why we will insist on basically using the derivative. Yeah, but I completely agree with you. I mean, like if you have, if you're not in a situation of exam or something, yeah, you can right away. What you're saying is, is, is correct. You basically take cos x, when you're doing far cos 5x, you compress it by factor of five, and then you have seven outside, so you're scaling by factor of seven vertically, and you get your graph right away. Forget about intervals of increase and decrease, you can draw the whole graph, right? Yeah, I agree. Okay. Yeah. <coughs> Comments? Um, so, um, I have already discussed this, but the exam is going to be in a way. Uh, so I should do a, a practice first. So tomorrow, 
I will send you a practice where practice just to upload on how to upload the, but you already know how to do it with IQ, right? So, but I'll still do one. Okay, let's see some chats here. Okay. Okay, no bad, no, oh, sorry, bro. Uh, is this going to be in the exam? No, right? Yeah, I mean, uh, we already said the, the limits of the exams are already decided, right? So it's gonna be chapter uh, until I think section 21, if I'm correct. Let me go back on Canvas and check it out for you. But yeah, it's up to, uh, <coughs> let me check it on Canvas. Meanwhile, you can ask other questions if you have. Um, one, five, seven. Uh, it's up to lecture, um, lecture, lecture, uh, lecture 21, which is extreme. So the exam is until extreme uh, of function. Yes, the, the exam is still on Friday. Yes. Yeah, we'll keep the exam at the same time as we decided, right? Um, can you do an example of fight like approximate, but for differential? Uh, I have already posted a solution online, right? So can you can you look it up? Uh, OQ solutions. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. Right. What will be the format of exam? The exam will be very similar to what you had in the midterm one, right? So um, nothing different than that. Will there be any multiple choice questions? No, 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 okay. no multiple choice, unfortunately, no, right. Yeah. So I think it was Rojan who asked this question about use differential. Um, just, uh, look it up, uh, on, on, on what, on, on IQ solutions. I have put an, uh, put a solution problem on it, but if you don't get it, please let me know. I'll have more office hours before the exam, right? So we'll have another office hour tomorrow, uh, at some time reasonable and we can discuss that. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions, comments? For like the related rates questions, um, yeah. are they gonna be um, like more simple related rates ones like like the latter or is it gonna be like harder ones such as like two airplanes flying, flying from like different angles? And so I have posted a, uh, I have posted a bunch of problems online, right? Remember that uh, link I showed you and I posted the link? Yeah. yeah. Try to do problems from there. I think they should be reasonably good for you. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is there any graphing questions? No, not really, right? Have you done any graphing yet? No, so no graphing question for midterm. Anything else? Uh, I found one from the textbook. Okay. Another elasticity of demand. Uh -huh. um, P equals negative 0 0.1 Q squared Minus zero point one Q plus six. Hold on. So negative zero point one Q squared. Yes. Um minus zero point one Q. Yep. Plus six. Plus six. All right. Okay. <coughs> so now what are you looking at? What is the question telling you? Um it's saying where P is the unit price in dollars and Q is the quantity demanded. Compute okay. the elasticity at Q equals 10. At Q equals to 10. I see. Is, is that, so you're looking at elasticity of demand at, at Q equals to 10, is that correct? Yeah, that's what it says. Okay, all right. So let's work on this. Oops. So let me just draw the line so that it's clear. Okay, so given this, 
question is what is my e of p <coughs> so again what is the formula for this now what is the formula for e of p uh, we just met, uh, had a problem similar to this so e of p is going to be here we have already done this problem is minus p by q dq by dp yeah so minus p by q dq by dp <coughs> all right so now first we need to find out dq by dp so well you see either you separate q here that's going to be painful or we can differentiate it implicitly right so let's do implicit differentiation so differentiate differentiate star implicitly is that okay yeah is, is is the reasoning clear why we are doing it implicitly yeah okay seems like so let's see okay all right yeah so now so derivative on so derivative on both sides with respect to with respect to <coughs> p <coughs> sorry so we get one equals to minus 0.1 derivative of q square is 2q dq by dp minus 0 0.1 dq by dp and derivative of six is zero so from here you can pull out dq by dp common and what is left in the bracket so 0 0.1 to q minus 0 0.1 there's a minus sign for both of them so i will just take minus sign outside here equals to one so i get dq by dp here to be one upon i can keep this minus sign here 0 0.12 q plus 1.1 okay so now, now your P is what? Your P is, you're not given P, you're given Q. So let's see. So we need P and Q both here, right? So first of all, when Q is, when Q is 10, what is your DQ by DP? It's going to be minus one upon 0 0.12 times 10 plus 0 0.1. So this is going to be minus one. When you multiply this, you get 1.2 plus 0 0.1, which is going to be minus 1.3. Yeah. So that is that. Let's see a few more charts. Oh, okay. Well, it doesn't matter, right? At this moment, at this. okay whatever so isn't it point two q oh, well i mean depends on what your problem tells you right i mean if you start with a different problem then you'll get a different solution oh you mean here oh i took the minus sign out for both of them right okay <coughs> so we get so uh you got when q is 10 you got dq by dp now in this formula you need p you need dq by dp you need q so q is already given to you which is 10 you need to find out p so what is p so p when q is 10 p is going to be minus 0 0.1 times 10 square minus 0 0.1 times 10 plus 6. <coughs> so let's see what is this going to be minus 0.1 times 100 minus uh, so this is going to be 1 plus 6 and this is going to be uh 10 minus 10 minus 1 plus 6 which is going to be minus 11 plus 6 which is going to be minus 5. so now it's time to plug everything back into this equation here yeah i think like on up, up there in the formula it should be 0 0.2 instead of 0 0.12 oh well i mean now we are work this problem with 0 0.12 right so it doesn't matter really right what your problem is is how your solution will be right 
Okay. Yeah. So think about this problem as working with. Oh, I see. Here you meant. Uh, like in the second and the, the DQ over DP equal. Yeah, yeah. So I'll change the problem. How about that? Yeah, it's you're right. I didn't write it properly. It is now zero point one two. Q no, that was right. I think it just you you didn't time zero point one by two. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, I see. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Well, That's okay. No, no. Well, we can correct it now. You're right. It's two Q. So it is going to be multiplied by two Q. It's going to be multiplied by two Q. Is going to be multiplied by. Let's correct it. So we get. Uh, thank you for that. Minus one upon. 0.2q plus 1, 0.1, yep. <clears throat> so now this is going to be, uh, so this is going to be two, right? So this is gonna be two plus 0.1, which is going to be 2.1. Yeah, thank you for that. Okay, so, so far good. Now here we are, we got, minus five. Okay, so everything looks good now. Um, okay, so now what next? <coughs> so now we need to plug everything in this equation. So E of P, which is E of minus five, is going to be minus P by Q. So minus five, minus of minus five by Q, which is 10, times dp by dq, sorry, dq by dp, which is going to be minus one by 2.1. So, all right, so we get what? So we get, this will become one by two times minus one by 2.1 which is going to be minus 4.2. So let's see if everything is correct. Yes. So here, um, this is good. This is good. This is good. This is good. So did we compute P correctly? Yes. So we got minus P by Q, which is correct. Uh, minus one dq by dp which was this so we got e of minus five is minus four point minus one upon four point two is that okay yep yeah but this is slightly um uh, this is slightly annoying the problem seems to be different because uh, the idea is um generally you get positive elasticity of demand right the reason why you had this extra minus is uh, to basically make elasticity of demand positive, right? But in this case, it turns out to be negative. That's okay, but yeah. Any other questions, comments? Uh, what would the uh, elasticity be in this case? You found out, right? Minus 12. Is one. that? Yeah, that's the elasticity of demand. And then like, how does revenue affect? So, what is R prime P? Is F of P, which is your Q, right? This is Q, one minus E of P. So what do we get? <coughs> we get F of P times one minus E of P, which is going to be one plus, this is going to be greater than zero. So that means the revenue is increasing. Right, because the derivative of something is greater than zero, that means the revenue is, revenue is, is increasing. Okay. okay. That's good, thank you. Okay, all right. So I think with this we'll stop. I will post this uh, lecture um, what do you say, this slides online and uh, I'll post uh, the next lecture notes by tomorrow, okay? So for the next class, although um, it's not part of the, <coughs> it's not part of the midterm, but it'll help you to do the problems, <coughs> okay?
That's right, Simon Fraser. Okay, all right. So, so we're just gonna do lectures like this from now on. Yeah, um, mostly I'll be posting lecture notes, okay. video lecture notes, and we'll have office hours like this, right? Mm -hmm. So, well, this is the best approximation possible, right? I mean, right. yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a historic moment in life. <laughs> Everybody's grounded, right? So, okay. Uh, good luck for your exams, and uh, we'll have an office hour um, tomorrow. Okay. Thanks. Thank you.